Hi, thanks for watching. And today I'm going to talk about how to produce potassium chlorate through electrolysis. Uh, now this isn't anything that I encourage or recommend that you do at home. We use a, a highly concentrated chlorine solution uh, that can get very warm. We can run the cell up to a couple hundred degrees. So burning or irritation is certainly possible, so we have to use extreme caution. That being said, uh, this is the cell that I was using right here. Uh, it's kind of a prototype that was uh, given to me uh, with a couple things in mind. When I got it, uh, they were curious if the normal Jane and Joe could operate this cell with limited instructions. And then they were curious how long the cell would hold up uh, before it may quit working. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the operation of it. That portion, extremely simple. Fill it with solution, turn on the switch, and it works. So that part's very, very simple. But next thing we need to know is what do we put in here for a solution to produce uh, potassium chlorine? And again, that's very, very simple also. Uh, we use potassium chloride. Uh, it, it's primary ingredient in uh, many ice melts that we use in the winter time. Uh, I get this in, well you can get it in an awful lot of the hardware stores. I got this in a 50 pound bag. Uh, you could probably get it in smaller versions possibly, but 50 pounds is going to produce an awful lot of chlorate. Only other thing we need, distilled water. Okay. In order to do that, we're going to have to get the, the uh, chloride into solution. Now the cell itself, when it's running, it is going to produce heat. Um, I've never really operated it without some form of insulation, and I'll show you that here real quick. I started this project in the spring, and I used uh, this foil wrap. One wrap will, will go around it one and a half times. So in the spring, I was actually using both wraps. Uh, then I got a little like AC vent for your air condition or for your uh, vehicles. I just stuck down it so I could monitor the temperature. Now, when I talk about temperatures here, everything is going to be in Fahrenheit. But uh, initially, I was running the cell at about 180 degrees, cooled down to about 160, at, uh, you know, at night, and then in the afternoon, I'd run 180 degrees. I've concluded that the temperature that I like it to operate is 140 degrees. That is an absolutely critical, uh, but anywhere from 120 to 180. Now, the reason that I mentioned 140 degrees is, and I'll pull this out, we've got two outer electrodes and an inner electrode. They create an electrolysis process. If it were up and running, it, it just percolates, it bubbles in there is how you know that it's working. But when I would take this off and filter out my, my finished product, uh, I, I got flaking from these electrodes and I've got some contaminants in there. I found that when I ran it at a lower temperature, about 140 degrees, I got very little erosion in the bottom of it. So I'm, I'm thinking running it at a little lower temperature is going to increase the longevity of it. Uh, but the temperature that it runs at isn't going it, it's going to produce the same amount of chlorine whether we run it at 120 degrees or 180. All, all we're doing is sacrificing the electrodes in the bit. How long do you run it? Um, I ran it for two days, I ran it for three days, I ran it for four days. Again, I settled on, I like running it for two days, and there's a reason for that. Uh, the solution is only going to hold so much uh, potassium chlorate in suspension, but it's still going to keep producing it. So once it's reached its saturation level, uh, the excess is going to fall to the bottom of the cell. That's not a problem. It's still perfectly usable. Uh, what it does is it forms like uh, salt crystals, but, but bigger, more like a rock salt type product. Uh, and when we filter that out, there's just another step that we have to go through to purify that as compared to just hot filtering. There is a second video in this section, uh, so if you watch that one, that's going to cover that a whole lot more in, in detail. 
uh, but like I said, four days was the longest that, that I would run. You're probably starting to use up most of your uh, potassium chloride in here, and it's not going to run as efficiently. I ran it for 100 days, and the only time that I shut it off was just to switch out cells. Uh, now, now we'll go back to that. When I was running the two-day cycle, I was actually running three jars. Uh, I always had three concentrations. I had one, I would take this one off, I would let it cool down uh, so we could uh, harvest the chlorine out of it. I had another one uh, that was ready to put back on, and then I had one that I was recharging. Uh, if you're running three or four days, you can probably get by with two. But going back into recharging, the cell is going to use the chloride that we're putting in here. And I'll give you a little bit of math. This is about all, all I'm going to give you. Uh, you can research this on your own. But we have to get this in, the chlor uh, chloride in the solution. So what I would do is I would pour, fill my pan up, pour this in here, and bring it to a boil. And it, it will dissolve it. Uh, it's going to take a while, five to ten minutes. If you have the time and the patience and you want to break it up, it's going to dissolve much quicker. Uh, so anyway, that's how we get our initial solution and we start it. It does take, uh, it's going to produce chlorate from the very first time, but it's probably going to take two or three generations. The third generation is when you're really going to start getting a much purer product because uh, it takes a while for the chemical reaction for it to work. So you're going to get potassium chlorate. Uh, the first go, but about the third time you're going to notice this is going to turn to a uh, kind of a yellow tintish color. Uh, from that point on, on you're good. But obviously we're producing potassium chlorate, so we're using up our chloride, so we have to replenish it. Uh, I believe the, the mole ratio, and again this is something you may want to double check, but I think it's about 64 to 60, uh, 64 to 66 percent to one unit of uh, potassium chlorine. So what I would do is when I harvest it, I'd let it dry, I'd weigh, weigh what that was, and then I'd take it times you know, six, 65%. Uh, that was good, but it's actually a little overkill because I, I was getting too much uh, salt concentration in it. So I backed it off to about 50%, uh, and then I got lazy from running it you know, for a couple months and I was just guessing. And, and I realized that I wasn't getting enough salt concentration in there because my production went down. So what I did at that point to get back to a proper level, uh, I would take my solution after I, you know, one of my solutions after it had been filtered out, uh, bring it to a boil, and I kept dissolving salt into it and let it cool in a jar uh, until I started getting crystals in the bottom. The first couple times I did it on the one cell, I, I mean, I probably put in 300 grams of uh, chloride, and I still got no no salt crystals in the bottom. But if you get about a, you know, when it cools down, if you get about an inch, inch and a half of salt crystals, that's going to be right. When you're ready to uh, use that product again, again, put it in your pan, bring it to a boil, and then you know, put it in your in your uh, switch out your cells and put it in there. Because the again the the Salts need to be dissolved in solution. The cell will keep it warm enough that that won't be an issue. But otherwise, you're going to end up with salt crystals in the bottom, uh, and again, they won't they won't dissolve. I averaged in my 100 day run. I averaged 122.6 grams of raw material a day. So just short of two pounds a week uh, is what that equated out to. Pretty impressive. Again, you need to you need to process that when it's all done. You need to purify it, but that's in the second video. Uh, after a hundred days, I've had no problems with this. It uh, the electrodes have held up relatively well. There's a, again a little bit of wear on them, uh, if you can see them. But I'm going to guess that it would probably run 250, 300 days, uh, and at that point, I'm sure the center electrode would be fine. Uh, we would just have to replace the, the outer ones. So, uh, again, it, it lived up to all of my expectations, uh, worked great, relatively simple. Uh, I tried to cover some things that might.
I that I had the words that hope you know that that might need somebody else down the road. Uh, was going to show you a couple other things. After it's purified, then this is what we this is what we get. It's just a nice light flake. Uh, and at that point, depending upon what you're going to use it for, and this is completely done. I've ran it through the purification process. Um, you can do with it what you want. I've got a bunch bagged up here. I've got a bunch more to process. But uh, like I said, this is, this is what I've made in the last 100 days, plus probably double this amount uh, I've yet to, to do. Uh, other purpose that I've got this bucket here, I, I should mention this too, is... If I, I, I would set the cell inside here because obviously I'm not around, but I was always concerned. If something would happen to this, it's probably a good idea to have this uh, contained in a vessel so that it uh, isn't going to run all over your floor or so on and so forth. And again, the, the vent hose here, uh, if you're running the cell in an outside environment, it's not a big deal, but it's going to put off some chlorine gas. Uh, so in my case, I was running it on a porch. Uh, I ventilated it to the outside. So that's real important too. Is you know, if you're doing it in an outside environment, not a big deal. But if you're doing it somewhere inside of a building, you're probably going to want to vent that to the outside. So that was my experience. I had a good time doing it. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, again. I'll try and provide you with whatever answers I can. If I can't get you an answer, shoot me an email uh, at kno3unv at gmail.com. Uh, if I can't answer it, I'll try and get you to somebody that can. But I had a good time doing this, and thanks for watching.